Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. This is video number three in a four part series determining overcurrent sizes for transformers based off of section 26 of the 2015 23rd edition of the Canadian Electrical Code. In this specific video, we are going to be dealing with other than dry type transformers under 750 volts. And we are going to be dealing with in this video only primary protection on this transformer. In the next video, we will take a look at what happens when we decide to omit that primary protection. Okay, there's rules specific to that, but again, this one is specific to primary protection only. Okay, so what we need to do, first off, with any really transformer calculation, we need to figure out what is our rated current. And since we're only dealing with the primary side, let's figure out the rated primary current. So we have 2000 VA, okay, divided by my primary voltage of 240 volts, as this is a single phase transformer, I do not need to multiply that line voltage by root three for this calculation, okay? Uh, we should end up with current, primary rated current of 8.33 amps. Okay, so we need to little, do a little bit of reading in 26254, which is our reference for this, or, uh, this calculation, okay? There's a couple of things. If we look at 26254, it tells me that if I have a rated primary current, sub rule one says, for a rated primary current, okay, we're going to take that 150% of that rated primary current and choose an overcurrent rated or set at not more than that value. But if we take a look at 2A, it actually tells us if 150% of the rated primary value for over 9 amps, so if our primary rated current is 9 amps or greater, that's where we're going to use that 150%. So I'm going to break this rule down into kind of a little bit of an explanation here. So if we have nine amps or greater, okay, if my primary rated current is greater than nine amps, it tells me my multiplier is 150% or 1.5. And if we read further on, it tells me if that size is not available, I am allowed to go up and select the next available size. So times 1.5, so we'll say I primary times 1.5 go up by overcurrent. Okay, so if this number was over 9 amps, we would multiply it by 1.5, we would go up and choose the next available size, overcurrent. Okay, sub rule 2, item B tells me if it is less than 9 amps, and if I continue reading, there's another exception that says if it's less than 2 amps. So let's write it like this. Let's say if it's from 2 amps up to, we'll say 8.999 amps. Because as soon as we hit 9, we're into the 150%. If it's between 2 amps and 8.999 amps, it tells me I cannot have an overcurrent rated or set at more than 167%. So what we would do, in this case, we would take our I primary times 1.67 and there are no exceptions to this. It doesn't tell me I'm allowed to go up to the next available size. So we would go down and then we would buy our overcurrent based on that number. Okay. Finally, if it's less than two amps, if my rated primary is less than two amps. Okay. If I read on, it tells me if my rated primary is less than two amps, I'm going to use 300% as my multiplier. I cannot have an overcurrent rated or set at more than 300% of that rated primary current. So if it's less than two, I primary times three or 300%. And again, no exceptions to this. It tells me I cannot exceed. Go down by OC, okay? So we have three individual choices here, depending on what the rated primary current is. In this case, because we are looking at 8.3 amps, as our rated primary, this right here becomes our multiplier. Our 167% is our multiplier. So we're going to take our 8.33 amps, multiply it by 1.67, gives me a maximum rating of my overcurrent of 13.91 amps. Okay, I am not allowed to exceed that. Now, if you're dealing with this type of calculation, table 13, once we're under that 15 amp range is really no longer our default for choosing overcurrent devices. There would need to be specific information given as to increments of overcurrents. For example, if I was given a choice and all of my overcurrents were in 0.5 amp increments, so half an amp increments, 
I would have a choice between 13 and 4, well, sorry, 13.5 and 14. Those would be my two choices. Because if I went up to 14, I'd be exceeding 167%. I can't do that. I would have to go down to the 13.5. If it was one amp increments, I would have a choice between 13 and 14. Again, if I went up to 14, I would exceed 167%, so I would go down to 13. If it was five amp, incre five amp increments, I would have a choice between 10 and 15 amps, and I would have to, again, go down to the 10 amp, okay? And so on. We could keep going with different increments, but the idea is, Whatever the increments are, pick the one that's underneath the 167% rating, okay? If we were dealing with 150%, we'd be allowed to go up to the next one, but that is the only exception, okay? The other two, I am forced to go down to buy my overcurrent. As I said, in the next video, what we'll take a look at is omitting primary overcurrent protection, where we'll again deal with sizing the secondary and the primary feeder overcurrent protection. Hopefully, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this has helped.